Bulletproof Radio, a state of high performance. Okay, let's go back to something like mental endurance, though. Okay, how, how does that work? Because for me, that was what I was lacking. And how do you get that? What What's the magic? So, so some of it is oxygenation of the bloodstream, right? And yes. you get that, right? You've got, the other is, is how you combine. I, one of the things that made the biggest difference when I started stacking these things, and I'll get into a story in a bit about how this kind of the, the last phase of nootropics came about back in 2008, 2012, but for me, but um, when you start stacking components, you have an adaptogen, right? You've got a choline donor. You've got your nootropic, whatever your core nootropic is going to be, right? You get an antioxidant, and then you might even have a component that's going to give you a stimulant effect. And you start stacking those in the proper proportions where you're going to be, you're going to be at least clinical in your dosage. And rather than subclinical, which most of the things you see off the shelf are subclinical in their dosage, um, you're clinical in their dosage in, and you take advantage of the potentiation effect that you can get when you start combining a couple of interesting compounds together and they start synergizing and they start accelerating the, the benefits or they extend the benefit or they do both. Um, when your body doesn't have a load, if it doesn't have an oxidant load, an oxidation load, right? if the adaptogens are effectively reducing stress levels, stress hormones, uh, you know, inflammatory conditions, then the nootropic works significantly better. And you can create a compound effect by doing that. You're not using more nootropic. You're reducing the load on your body of all the other things that keep it from performing. But it doesn't have to fight you know, toxicity in your body, inflammation, right? The other factors. Suddenly, the nootropics stand out and they go, hey, we can play. One more comment too, which is timing. <clears throat> so I'll just use myself as an example because during COVID, it was in Panama. We had for five months the hardest lockdown in the world, four hours of freedom a week. It was roadblocks. If you're outside of those four hours, you were going to jail. And I right. just decided, you know what? I can't control that. I'm just going to get hyper productive. And that time, and this is like right before Mark and I met, I would start, you know, and I'm, I'm driving hard, but at 2, 3 p.m., you know, my performance would start dropping off. I could push myself to 4 or 5 p.m., but the performance wasn't there. You know, I was just kind of operating my fumes. Met Mark started using yeah. the dudes. Now I can go to 6, 30, 7, 8 and maintain that peak, that peak performance. And I was able to write a book, which I had never been able to do before. Dave was kind enough to give us a foreword, which is from sick to superhuman, the biological optimization blueprint. Right. And again, the difference in mental endurance, mental performance for me um, during those, those tough times was a game changer. I mean, it was double. But back to timing, you know, if you take nootropics, again, there's that Gaussian curve, that performance curve, which will last anywhere from four to eight hours. So if you're, if you get energy in the morning, maybe you don't need nootropics at that time. And this right. tend to crash out in the afternoon. Well, around 12, 12, 30, 1 PM, take your nootropics and you're going to be rocking all afternoon long. It's, it's true. Um, I used to have serious problems in the afternoon and you can hack those problems seriously with just intermittent fasting. Um, you know, you, you can learn how to eat, you can fix your cell membranes and you can get stable blood sugar. So you can have your average performance. Okay. Average performance is better than crap performance, which was my life when I was obese and had blood sugar regulation issues and mitochondrial issues. But there is another level beyond average. And like step one in the way I look at it is get your mitochondria working. So the blood has to be in the brain. You have to be able to make electricity. But step two, three, four, and five around instead of having an average afternoon where, you know what, I'm actually going to work on my book at two in the afternoon, which most authors would never do because you can't turn on creative juices. They're effortlessly at your fingertips uh, when you have the right cocktail of cognitive enhancers that are a, a part of things. 